Welcome to our deep dive. We're going to be talking about something super cool today. IOLs, that's short for intraocular lenses. You've probably heard of them, maybe even know someone who has one. Yeah, or maybe you're facing cataract surgery yourself. Whatever the reason, stick with us and you'll be able to walk into any conversation about IOLs feeling like a total pro. We're going to cover everything. From the basics of how IOLs work. To the different types out there. And how to make the right choice for your needs. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, what exactly are IOLs? Basically, they're artificial lenses, and they're implanted in the eye. Okay. Most often, it's to replace the eye's natural lens, usually after cataract surgery. So let's say um, we have someone, we'll call her Sarah. Okay. And Sarah's active. All right. She loves photography, but she's started to notice her vision is getting blurry. Mm -hmm. What could be going on? Sounds like Sarah might be dealing with cataracts. Cataracts. Yeah, they happen when the natural lens in your eye you know, the one you're born with, gets cloudy. Like looking through a foggy window. Yeah, exactly. Instead of light passing through clearly, it gets scattered. So everything looks blurry. Pretty much. Mm. It all comes down to a buildup of protein in the lens. Oh, right. I remember that from our research. Like the lens gets all gunked up over time. Right. Those proteins clump together. And instead of focusing light neatly on the retina. That's the back of the eye, right? Yeah, the retina. Well, instead of that, the light scatters. Okay. And that's what causes the blurry vision. So that's where the IOLs come in. That's it. They swap out that cloudy lens for a new clear one, vision restored. That's amazing. But I bet IOLs haven't always been so, so high tech. You're absolutely right. The technology has evolved like crazy. Early IOLs, they were rigid, okay. needed stitches, longer recovery time. Oh, ouch. Now we're talking foldable IOLs. Foldable? Seriously? Oh, yeah. Like tiny little pieces of origami inserted through a teeny incision. That's incredible. Makes the whole procedure way less invasive. So much better for someone like Sarah. But, okay, so the cloudy lens is out, a new one's in. How do we pick the right IOL for her, you know, considering her active lifestyle yeah. and that she loves photography? That's a great question and a really important one. Choosing an IOL, it's not one size fits all. Oh, for sure. It's about finding the best match yeah. for each person's needs and how they live their life. Right. So Sarah wants those crisp, clear photos mm -hmm. of, you know, landscapes, close-ups. Exactly. What are her options? Well, we could start with the most basic type. <laughs> Fixed focus monofocal IOLs. Fixed focus, what does that even mean? Think of it like a camera lens, but it's set at just one focal length. It's great for distance vision. Okay. So seeing things far away, perfect. Like mountains, those big sweeping landscapes. Exactly, but for anything close up, you know, like reading a book or even looking at a photo on your camera, you'd probably need reading glasses. Not ideal for Sarah then. Yeah, if she wants to see those close up details in her photos, not the best oh, fit. Gotcha, so what else is there? Well, there's another kind of monofocal IOL, accommodating focus. Okay, so still monofocal. Yep. But these have a bit more flexibility. Oh. They can adjust to a point. Okay. So you get some near vision, some far vision. Hmm. Better, but probably still not perfect for Sarah, right? Mm. We want her to ditch the reading glasses entirely. Exactly. For someone like Sarah, we'd probably be looking at multifocal IOLs. Multifocal. These are the cool ones. They work like those bifocals or progressive lenses you see in glasses. So they have multiple zones of focus. Exactly. You get near, medium, and far vision all in one lens. So it's like having trifocals built right into her eye. Pretty much. Wow. And that could potentially get rid of the need for reading glasses completely. That's the goal. Amazing. But it's important to remember that these multifocals, they do require your brain to adapt. Oh, right. Getting used to the different zones. Exactly. Some people, they adjust super quickly. Uh -huh. Others, it might take a little longer. Makes sense. Anything else to consider? Well, there's another common vision issue that Sarah might have, too. Oh. Astigmatism. Astigmatism. Yeah, it causes blurry vision. Yeah, at all distances, right? That's right. I remember learning about that. And for that, we've got the Toric IOL. Toric. It's specially designed to correct astigmatism, sharp vision, no matter what Sarah's looking at. Wow, so many different options. Each IOL tackling its own little vision challenge. Mm. But how do we know which one's the absolute perfect fit for Sarah? Mm. Guess we'll have to find out in part two. Stay tuned. Mm. So finding the right IOL for someone like Sarah. Right, with her photography and, you know, just being active. Yeah. It's all about figuring out her individual needs. Like a personalized approach. Exactly. That's where the eye doctor comes in. Makes sense. They look at everything. Sarah's age, how bad her cataracts are. Right. 
what she does every day, what she wants her vision to be like. So Sarah and her doctor, they work together. It's a total partnership. Sarah talks about what she needs, what she wants, and the doctor brings all their knowledge about IOLs and the surgery itself. Okay. And together they weigh the pros and cons of each IOL. I bet things like, you know, hobbies, work, uh -huh. even how active someone is. Oh yeah, absolutely. That all factors in. For sure. Like with Sarah, her photography, she needs to see clearly at all distances. Yeah. And being active, well, that could even affect what material we choose for the IOL. Oh, speaking of materials, I read that some IOLs can even block UV rays. That's right. Most of the IOLs these days, <laughs> they're made to block those harmful UV rays. It's like built-in sunglasses. Wow. That's pretty quick. It's come a long way. Those early IOLs, yeah. they were all about restoring basic vision. Right. Now it's about going above and beyond. So let's say Sarah's thinking about those multifocal IOLs, you know, for both near and far vision. Mm -hmm. What are some things she should know? Well, there's an adjustment period. Oh. Wow. It takes a bit for the brain to get used to those different zones in the multifocal lens. Okay. Some people, boom, they adapt super fast. Others, it might take a little longer. They might see some halos or glare especially at night. Hmm. So it's not like instant perfect vision? Not always. That's why talking to the doctor is key. Yeah, they can help manage expectations. Totally. They'll guide Sarah through the whole recovery process. So it sounds like this decision, it's more than just the IOL itself. Oh, yeah. It's the lifestyle, the expectations. It all plays a role. Some folks, they're fine with an adjustment period. Okay. Others, they'd rather have that predictability of a monofocal lens, even if it means reading glasses. And of course, there's the cost factor. Definitely. IOLs come at different prices. Yeah. And insurance coverage can be tricky. Right. Some of the fancy ones, like those multifocals or toric lenses. Okay. They might mean some out-of-pocket costs. So it's a balancing act. Exactly. Finding that IOL that checks all the boxes for Sarah's vision. Right. But also keeping her budget in mind. Exactly. That's why it's so important for Sarah to be open with her doctor. About her budget, her insurance. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So they can find options that work for both her vision and her wallet. So we know choosing an IOL is super personal. Mm. But what excites you about this field? You know, knowing how much these little lenses can change people's lives. It's the innovation and the potential for really customized vision correction. Okay. Imagine IOLs that are made just for your eye, your needs. Wow. <laughs> That's like personalized medicine, but for your eyes. That's it. And we're getting closer. Really? We've got things like adjustable focus IOLs. Okay. They can be fine-tuned after surgery. No way. It's not just about fixing vision anymore. It's wow. about making it the best it can be. That's incredible. It's a really amazing time to be working in this field. So it's not just about getting back what you've lost. It's about having even better vision than before. Yeah. That's powerful. Before we move on to the future of IOLs, okay. let's take a moment and ask our listeners, what surprised you the most about IOLs? Right. What stuck with you? I mean, it's amazing to think how far we've come from those rigid lenses to these customizable ones, even adjustable IOLs. So where do you think things are headed? What's next for IOLs? One area that's really exciting is um, developing IOLs that can actually release medication. Oh, wow directly into the eye. Imagine treating things like glaucoma or macular degeneration oh, no, I see. with targeted drug delivery, mm. fewer side effects, better results. So it's not just about vision correction. Then. Exactly. It's like a therapeutic too. Exactly. And then they're biocompatible materials. Mm. We're seeing a lot of progress there. Yeah. These new materials, they can integrate with the eye like yeah. seamlessly. Mm. Less inflammation, better long-term outcomes. So the future of IOLs, it's looking pretty bright. It is, both figuratively and literally. Yeah. But even with all these advancements, we have to remember choosing an IOL, it's a personal decision. Absolutely. IOL technology, it's always evolving. It's important to stay informed, talk to your eye doctor. Yeah. They can help you understand the options, make the best choice for you. So let's wrap up this deep dive. Okay. What are the key takeaways for our listeners? We started with Sarah. She's active, loves photography, but her vision... It's getting blurry because of cataracts. Right. And we talked about how IOLs can replace that cloudy lens, bring back clear vision, even protect against UV rays. We learned about all those different types of IOLs, the pros and cons of each. From those basic monofocal lenses to the multifocal and toric IOLs. And most importantly, choosing the right IOL, it's a team effort. You and your eye doctor working together, taking into account your lifestyle, what you need to see clearly, 
and how much it all costs. It's a partnership. And as IOL technology keeps getting better, we can expect even more amazing things, right? Options that are even more personalized, more sophisticated. Vision correction and eye health, those lines, they're starting to blur. It's a really exciting time for the future of vision. So as we end this deep dive, here's something to think about. As IOLs become more advanced, more customizable, how do you think that's going to change our relationship with our vision, with our overall well-being? It's been great diving into the world of IOLs with you. Keep learning about this incredible technology and definitely talk to your eye care professional. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to your vision. Thanks for joining us.